This week, we're joined by Jacob Infante. Um, Jacob, I know you through Twitter. I don't know if you're on any other social media platforms. So nothing that I produce football content on. Everything like football related, you'll find on my Twitter. So that's just at Jacob Infante 24. The biggest roadblock that could potentially happen would be the quarterback play, right? Like uh, it's a rookie quarterback, so we're not sure what we're going to get. But say the rookie quarterback does play well. What is the next potential roadblock or obstacle you think that this team might face in this next upcoming season? It's tough to say because you look at this Bears roster, there are way fewer needs than there were even a year ago this time last year or you know, especially this time two years ago. Uh, I think Ryan Pohl's done a really good job of fixing a lot of important needs that they have on both sides of the ball. I'd say maybe offensive line, and I say that solely because you know they brought in Coleman Shelton who – was you know league average center, and that's a massive upgrade over what the Bears had with Cody Whitehair performing poorly, uh, Lucas Patrick performing poorly, and just overall bad center play over the last couple of years. In theory, that should be a good upgrade, but at the same time, I don't think they have a star on the offensive line yet. I think Darnell Wright could be that guy. I think Tevin Jenkins could be that guy. Nate Davis is coming off of a disappointing year. Obviously, he he's in line to start at right guard, but there's a potential that if he puts together a season similar to last year, then he's going to see the out in his contract exercise two years into his three-year deal. Uh, And Braxton Jones, I think, is better than a lot of people give him credit for. He's not a star left tackle, and I feel like he'll struggle against top-tier edge rushers, and he has, but he can hold his own. It's not a bad offensive line by any means, and it's gotten better to the point I don't think they need to go offensive line in round one. But at the same time, there's still a lot of question marks there. So I'd say that's probably the biggest obstacle. Uh, There are probably others that could stand out. But at the same time, uh, I think there's still a decent amount of question marks that I can't definitively say, all right, this is going to be a great offensive line next year. David, right when you asked me this throughout the week, immediately one name jumped to my mind, and that's Matt Eberflus. Going 0-4 last year was not good. I still have some concerns, and you've seen the cycle repeated by the Bears before with, you know, drafting a quarterback while keeping a coach for his last year and this and that. We were this close, this close to finally having a complete turnaround, right? And so it it does kind of go back and feel the same a little bit where, hey, this coach might be in his last year here trying to save his job with a rookie quarterback. If the quarterback's playing well, but other things are going wrong. If if the defense has given up a fourth quarter lead, oh, Matt Eberflus, his yeah. head is on the chopping block. You know, if this team is healthy, we're going to go really far. What what you're saying is, is that you don't have depth, right? Like, and basically, like top to bottom, right now on this Bears team, I look at it and I go, yeah, every position looks super stacked as a starter. I found it interesting how Ryan Poles approaches free agency and how he goes and he's basically doing back end of the draft moves through free agency special teamers, backup free safeties, backup strong safeties, backup linemen. He's doing this on like two-year deals with uh, free agents, basically, which is not necessarily a bad idea, but I rack my brain trying to think of what team has done this in the past. What team has built depth through free agency rather than depth through the draft, right? And if you're going to do that, you have to have top-end talent at the beginning of your draft. So you need first and second rounders to become superstars so that you can trade away third and fourth and fifth round picks for like depth pieces instead of drafting them. So my biggest obstacle or roadblock is just depth. Because in my mind right now, if Jervon Dexter goes down, you're starting Zach Pickens. If Keenan Allen goes down, you're starting Tyler Scott. If uh, Tevin Jenkins goes down, you're starting Ryan Bates or whoever else, right? You're starting Ryan Bates at left tackle if Braxton Jones goes down. If anything happens, and as we know, it's like a 17-game season, it's three games of the preseason, it's 100% injury rate at this point in the NFL. Somebody's going down, and right now there's too many positions across the board that if they go down, I don't trust the backup. So my roadblock would be depth. I think that's definitely valid. Historically, a lot of the best teams tend to identify depth through the draft, and they find some of those mid-round picks that can develop well under high-end starters. Those high-end starters leave in free agency. They provide comp picks, and, oh, we already have the replacement in store. So uh, it's going to be interesting for sure to see uh, maybe higher floor but lower upside depth additions. I think that's going to really help out on special teams. But if guys get hurt, I don't know necessarily how valuable that's going to be on offense or defense. So 
I mean, I think that's a valid point for sure. The biggest thing that I've appreciated about Ryan Poles moving forward is his patience in the sense of like where to add people and how to add people. And there's a lot of off season left and I, you know, training camp cuts are a real thing, right? Like training camp cuts, uh, post draft cuts. Um, Hunter Renfro is a free agent still for God's sakes. Like you need a slot receiver and you haven't picked up Hunter Renfro. Like, what are you doing? There's definitely still some depth to be added. So I'm not panicking yet, but in terms of obstacles right now, like I think Paulie has the best answer where it's, it's the coach. Like, I don't know yet if Matt Eberflus is a good coach yet. 